Welcome to a new video in my home automation playlist and today I'm going to talk about a new Sonoff product that I received uh, from Sonoff and this is the R5 which is a scene switch and if you just look at this device this may appear just like another uh, M5 which is uh, one of the new uh, Wi-Fi switches the difference here is that it has uh, six switches so as you can see well it has like three of these uh, I don't know blades but then you can push it on the down and on the up as well and and if I uh, flip it around you can see that it doesn't have any relays or anything behind this so this is battery operated it gets connected to either the R5 or sorry either the M5 or there is a new Zigbee basic not this one but uh, there is a newer version of Zigbee basic so they are acting as gateway uh, gateways for these uh, switches and they are going to communicate wirelessly well obviously the good thing about this one is that since it runs on battery power you can just place this anywhere and then you you can configure this to control any of your devices so again this is like a secondary switch like a two-way switch that you can configure to work with any of your existing son of devices or you can just have them as like scenes so maybe you press this switch and that's going to turn off all your lights in your living room and then if you do another one then it's going to do something different and of course it has other functions as well so for example long presses and the double presses so it is really versatile and with this single panel I mean anyway it has like six inputs but with the different actions it can adapt to a lot of different actions that you can configure so I think I pretty much explained everything what you need to do in a nutshell already and there is not much to it and in terms of the unboxing you are getting some screws and uh, some double sided tape so you can fix it on a wall or you can you know screw it on anyway the, the box itself is really a small box unfortunately it doesn't say whether the communication between the scene switch and the m5 is bluetooth or something else but i know that the m5 and also the ns panel now they use esp32 so maybe they are using the bluetooth chip on the esp32 but uh, i haven't taken it apart so i haven't seen if there is any other additional rf circuitry inside going back to the box you also get these stickers so you have a couple of these stickers that you can uh, stick on the plate so you can remember you know which switches for you know turning lights on and off setting some scene modes reading you know eating leaving the house sorry leaving the house arriving uh, at home or just some yeah some other icons uh, so that's good and also there is a small instruction uh, booklet but it just contains the usual things like how you can configure this and let me just take a second look of this device uh, so I already mentioned about the uh, free switches and uh, we have some indicator lights on each of the corners or like you know the six positions that you can push and if I look at the back side I mean by the way it has the same sort of uh, design aesthetic as the son of uh, M5 and if I remove this plate this is the one that you can screw or onto the wall or use the adhe adhesive and then that goes onto the back and it's held on by some magnets and of course you have a tab here for the batteries and then here it says that it uses two times CR2032 cells in order to operate this so it uses six volts which makes me say that maybe it is using Bluetooth and not uh, some RF because they usually run or 12 volt batteries but yeah I can be mistaken so I think we are ready to set this up so the first thing is that I'm going to remove the battery tab which uh, looks very stiff so the battery tab just needed a little bit more force to get it off uh, I was just afraid that I'm going to break it but yeah it just works fine and I, if I press it then you can see that we have a small LED on the part or the switch where you press it yeah so I think I'm going to put this one here and now we can open up the EVLink application so as I said we are going to pair this with my M5 so I'm going to select my M5 and I go going to into settings and I think we have seen this in the past as well where it says EVLink remote sub devices so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click on add and I just need to push any button on this remote and now I can see that this is an R5 and okay let's say it's in the living room 
I'm not going to rename this for now and uh, yeah so now we have an R5 and I'm guessing if I press any of these buttons then at some point I would have some records here maybe I need to go off and then come back again and yes uh, so I just waited for a couple of seconds and now I'm starting to see the logs so I'm just guessing there's going to be a delay on when you actually push the button and how uh, quickly the logs are appearing here because this is a scene switch there is nothing here which uh, controls any outputs so what we would need to do is we need to set up some scenes in order to get this uh, R5 to actuate any of my devices. So here I'm in the scenes and I'm just going to create a new scene. So first is if a smart device R5 channel 1 gets selected uh, then we have still three options here as I mentioned so you can configure what should happen if it's clicked, double clicked or long, long press. So basically that's three times six different options that you can configure. So if it's clicked then I'm going to do something with my 4CH Pro, so smart scenes, sorry, smart device, 4CH Pro and uh, channel 1 I'm going to reverse, so not turn it on or turn it off but then reverse, so with a single button click we can uh, turn it on and, and after that we can also turn it off as well. So I think I'm just going to rename, sorry, name this as scene 1. So now if we press this one nothing really happens because I realized that this was upside down and this is actually channel 1. So if I press this then uh, the channel, sorry, CH1 turns on and if I press it again then it turns off. And I think we have some issue with some interference here because if I press it right here then it doesn't work. But if I do it here then it works. I'm not really sure. Maybe it is too close to the screen. So you might have to play around with, with a little bit. Okay, so this is the first that got configured. Maybe I can just quickly create a few more scenes. So let's say, uh, no, not tap to perform. So if the channel 2 is clicked, then I want to do something on the uh, 4CH Pro. So I'm going to toggle the channel 2 and I'm going to call this uh, scene 2. Okay, so the first button still toggles channel 1 and now the second button toggles channel 2. And I had this uh, weird uh, behavior because uh, this 4CH Pro was uh, configured to interlock. So if I turn on channel 1 then the channel 1 turns on, if I click the second one then the channel 2 turns off and sorry turns on and I can just toggle both of them using you know each of these buttons so okay this is nice that's working so maybe I can create another scene because we have so many buttons I think I can just use like channel 3 uh, so if I click on the channel 3 then I want these both of them to be turned off so smart device 4CH Pro and I want a channel 1 to be off and then channel to be to be off and uh, for the other two I don't want to make any changes so that's going to be my scene 3 so if I click the third button then both of them turn off so I think this is pretty much what the scene switch is going to be good for again it doesn't have any output so this is mainly designed so you can create scenes to control any of your other devices but I think that will be all for today thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video